everybody, it's Tyler here at Kalahari High School event, checking with 6842K Killer Instinct. They're in from Indiana, a couple tournament wins, uh, also a couple of the build awards as well too for this team, and looking absolutely phenomenal here at Kalahari. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about on this row. By the way, this might be one of the most aesthetically pleasing robots I've ever seen uh, in VRC so far, but a lot of great functionality that goes into this as well. A lot of other slapper we'll be talking about. We got a drop down wing. Uh, I love their side wings as well too. Some cool rollers on the side and they're a really good dry base that we'll be diving into as well. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Uh, so we have Arden and Luke here to talk about the uh, slapper mechanism you're doing. You know, overall, this robot to me is very much so about speed and control on the field so far. So talking about what's gone into your slapper and how you're implementing it on the field. Yeah, so our slapper is one of the fastest in the world. For lots of the beginning months of the season, we were we were the fastest in the world. Luke, do you want to talk about a bit with the ratio? Yeah. So one thing I think is really unique that uh, a lot of other teams didn't have at the beginning of the season was the uh, power system that we have. So if you see here, we have an 11 watt motor here. We have a 5.5 watt motor here. So when we were originally designing our first robot, we realized that we didn't really need 11 watts on our intake as the tri balls aren't very heavy. And you can't really have just an extra random half motor on your drive bay. So we decided to put it on our, our shooting mechanism. So that allows us to have an extra power here and allows us to really to have a much faster ratio on our slapper. So the bottom, the bottom axle here is a 12 tooth running at 200 RPMs for both motors. It's geared to uh, 36 tooth at 66 RPM, then to a 60 tooth at finally 40 RPM. And so, sorry, yeah, 40 RPM. And so the slip gear is double slip, meaning it has two sets of teeth. So the slapper actually runs at 136.7 RPM on the 66 RPM slip gear times two because of the double slip. So that really makes it more efficient we're not sacrificing power as is speeding this uh, shaft up. We just use the same rotation twice. So the bands will, it'll retract and the bands will power it forward twice per rotation. Can we see how fast that's shooting by the way? And uh, uh, something they ask you, you said it is very quick. What is that translating into? How quickly can you get through match loads or through your skills uh, tri balls? Yeah, so Rishi, if you want to run this lap real quick. Okay, so our slapper, most of the time we kind of struggle to keep up with it, but normally we get a good run. We get about 44 balls in 20 seconds, if not faster. That allows us for in skills to have a lot of time to push all of those match loads into the goal. And for matches, we don't really use the slapper, but if we ever end up needing to use it, we can quickly get off two or four match loads almost instantaneously and quickly push them in before our opponents can react. So you said 44 and about 20 seconds. Are you actually able to load that quickly for that yes. as well? Because there's got to be a lot of coordination yeah. in doing that too, right? We, we've spent a lot of time trying to practice to match load this. We originally had a catapult, so we had to spend a lot more time practicing to match load into a slapper instead. Very cool, Matt. Uh, Luke, as well, too, talk to me about your uh, side wings uh, that you're doing on your robot. Uh, anything in particular stands out? And something I always like to hear about, any changes you made throughout the season uh, on these two? So yeah. So our side wings are about, I would say, eight to nine inches long. And that's a little bit shorter than our previous robot, simply because we found that of how long they were, if a tri ball would like get pushed on the edge, it would give a lot of give. And so it would like it would collapse into a V shape, which didn't really work well. So we made them a little bit shorter. And so the, this side is not wedged, well this side is wedged. So originally they were both wedged, but in order to get our hang to work consistently, we decided we had to shorten this one because the wedge part would rub up against the bar barrier, causing us to not be able to get our hang. So we made this shorter, but it still is able to push the ball over, like over from the other side. Because we love, one strategy we love to run is kind of like the return strategy, where like we stay on our near side, we wait for our opponents to shoot their balls over. So what we would do is we'll push them back over to our offensive side where our partner can then score them. This allows us to not have to use our match loads, while also taking matches from our opponents, thus lessening their score and raising our score. 
you, know, you mentioned before you, you switched over from a catapult to to your slap or anything. So the, I think that's so much about that the way that the meta of this game has evolved, right? It's like you talk, you still need those things for skills, but in the matches themselves, that dynamic is completely changed, especially in playoffs that we've seen as well too. Do you visualize? Uh, we're filming this before playoffs. Do you visualize that match strategy changing, getting into playoffs at all, or are you going to use the same thing as you are in quals? I feel like we're going to use the same strategy, only hopefully we run it a little bit better. Some of our partners in qualifications haven't really fully understood the strategy. They haven't really been able to fully execute it. So we hope in our finals matches to get a partner who really understands what we're, what we're trying to do and what the strategy really is. No, it totally makes a lot of sense with that. Uh, Rich, you're talking about the uh, dry base and what you're doing uh, for that, watching on the field. Like I said earlier, it's all about control. You have a lot of that on the field as well. So talking about how you're going over the barrier in the middle and just overall negotiating the field. Yeah, so obviously being the driver, uh, my favorite part of the robot is the drive base. So we run 400 RPM. It's a 48 tooth high strength gear to a 72 tooth. And this uh, this ratio was a great balance between speed and also torque. Uh, we originally ran a 360 RPM ratio, which we had a little bit of problems going over the barrier, which is really important in this game. I'll touch on that later. But it also had uh, problems. It wasn't fast enough, as fast as we wanted, right? So. Um, if you've seen some of our videos, we go over the barrier really smoothly, which really helps with a lot of our strategies. We use these laser cut sleds to go over the barrier, as well as this high strength axle here to make us slide over the barrier well. We also have most, uh, our center of gravity is a little bit forward, so that once we go up, it wants to go back down instead of staying up and making us flip a lot more. Yeah, overall, great design. I love the thought process that goes into it as well, too. We're starting to see more teams implement those rails, and I think how valuable those really are. Yeah. I'm surprised there's not more teams doing that. I'm guessing we will see that as uh, the game starts to continually evolve as well, too. Uh, speaking of something that I think teams really need to implement more, uh, Izzy, talking about the rollers that you have uh, on your robot here. This is such like a, a simple feature that so many teams should be doing. I'm glad to see that you are. Uh, and then also talk to me more about the uh, drop down wing you have, too. So with the rollers, it was something that was obviously very simple to do for us, but helped us get out of a lot of sticky situations. So what the rollers do for us is when we're stuck in a corner or in a trapping situation, they allow the robot to roll along the wall so we can easily get out. And then as for uh, the drop down arm, so as Luke mentioned, we have our regular wings here, but then we have our vertical wing back here. So how this works is there's a band for resistance to hold it up, but it's activated by a single acting piston and this allows us uh, to score in skills, but also um, in matches to use our hang. And our hang is basically driving up on the barrier and this will lock in around the other side of the barrier to hold the robot and balance it. And I watched your last match, as I watched your last two matches on that, this seems to just be so effective. Like you see other teams, they have to struggle to line up and stuff like that. You guys are just able to go full blast, couple seconds left in the match, and just works out for you. It gives you, and you think about that, that gives you so much more time to do other things prior yeah. uh, to as well. So that's great to see on that. As we uh, wrap up on this robot, uh, I mentioned earlier that this is one of the most aesthetically pleasing robots I've ever seen. Uh, so Will, talk to me about what's gone into the overall design. I noticed a little bit of bling going on around here too, right. as well. So talk to me about uh, why is it important to actually create a robot that does look as aesthetically pleasing is what you have. I mean, arguably, having an aesthetically pleasing robot is really important. I mean, being intimidating or being recognizable, like we have a YouTube channel, and I know I've already talked to maybe four or five teams who've said, hey, we watched your reveal. You guys look really good. I mean, it's really important. And from my experience, I think that good working thing, like robust and clean looking designs look good already. So just thinking about the aesthetic and trying to be as efficient with my building as I can really helps. And I guess who doesn't want a sick looking robot? Right? And, you know, and, and branding is so important amongst teams. I think something that's very underrated a lot of times too. You think about uh, in marketing, we think about positioning, right? And if you're looking at getting picked for things, these are these little things that can kind of put you over the top sometimes mm -hmm. in getting teams to think about you. Obviously you want to be an alliance captain, but if you're ever in, in that spot. I also do want to mention too, as an Indiana team, I, I can appreciate the uh, corn. Right. Uh, logo up here as well. You got to take some pride in the corn, right? So, uh, but overall, Killer Instinct, this is such a cool robot. So thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about it, what's gone into it. And I wish you the best of luck here at Kalahari and of course throughout the rest of the season. But this is so cool. And I hope you guys are proud of yourselves because I know the community is going to appreciate it as well. Thanks a lot, guys. I get a quick shout out to 3D3E and 3D3V for the 3D cut, the 3D printed uh, disc will spin up and then the little tri ball here. Absolutely. Once again, guys, thank you so much and good luck the rest of the way at Kalahari. Thank you. 
This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.